Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. Welcome to the show. Happy New Year, everybody. It's 2023. Yay, 2023. It's our first episode of the year. We back, baby. We didn't go anywhere, but we're back. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and we, we ate our grapes. Yeah, I ate the grapes. I ate collard greens and black eyed peas on oh, New Year's Day. You? I did. It was disgusting. Mm. Um absolutely disgusting so you know hopefully what else did i do anything else i don't think so see i didn't i didn't eat that i had um some lasagna Mm. that my mom made so uh yeah yeah well i mean i had other food other than that too but yeah the restaurant that we were at were like offering that as a side as a special so i was like well might Um, as well yeah yeah so we did it Mm -hmm. maybe it'll bring you good luck it better and money that's what it's supposed to bring so oh yeah let's oh right 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 money baby that's what i need Mm -hmm. um okay also i have an update guys if you listen to last week's episode i thought that i had a package thief right yes (laughs) yes we Um, remember (laughs) i did not in fact have a package thief um jeffrey Um, bezos was just running a little behind schedule um, and the, my mom's package came the next day. So, you know, Christmas was not ruined. There was no Grinch, in fact. And I got the shirt for free. Sorry, Jeffrey. Well, I mean. It's not my fault. They, honestly, they shouldn't have said that it arrived then. Exactly. Right? Like, like, it wasn't there for, like, yeah. three days. Not my fault. Yeah. Really not. I tried to pay for it, but you gave my money back real easy, so. Sorry. But, yeah, you know, at least, you know, Christmas wasn't ruined for me. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> because of that. I um, I think yeah, I think that's well deserved. Like you, yeah, you should have got your money For, back. right, you and did, it so. really wasn't even that expensive, like fifteen dollars. So yeah, he Amazon can afford can... to buy my mom a present for Christmas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Amazon does not need that extra fifteen dollars. Absolutely so. not. <laughs> they get so much um, of my money for real. Yeah. <clears throat> um. I did have something else to say about, like, New Year's. Um, Well, it's more of a question. So, do you have any sort of, like, resolutions or goals for the year? Mm, A new job. That's my biggest goal. Oh. I mean, mm, yikes. That's a big yikes to say on here, but it is. So. Yeah. Yeah, what about you? Yeah. I mean, I might have to second that. And also, Mm. (laughs) um, to keep the show going... Yeah, obviously, get and it growing this year. Of course, mm-hmm. bigger and better things. Yes, it's only up from here, baby. We got big plans. Yeah, we do. very soon in the future too. So yes, and we mm-hmm. ju- we just need a lot more listeners, and you know, I think we, we can get there. We can spread the news. Yeah, and with that, um, you guys should go rate and review us on Apple. I just said Amazon. Wow, it's been a long <laughs> day, guys. And, um, I was gonna say Apple Podcast. Yeah, and Spotify. Yeah. I don't think you can write us on Amazon, but I guess if you can, maybe try. Yeah, not maybe not yet. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I actually have um, no idea. Yeah, I don't think there's podcasts on Amazon. I think it's just because you were talking about Amazon. Yeah, no, definitely, just, Jeffrey. Yeah. You should maybe get on that if he's listening. I mean, I think he probably is. Yeah, <laughs> he's always yeah. listening. Yeah, he's he's one of our listeners. Um, <laughs> so I do have another sort of goal for the year is to read more books. Oh, that's a really good one. Yeah. So I actually finished a graphic novel this morning that I what? started yesterday. Wow. <laughs> I read it in two days. Love that. Um, it was really good. It's called um, The Magic Fish. Oh. And it's it's so, like, I love graphic novels. Like, most of the time, they have, like, really beautiful artwork. Mm-hmm. And that's just the best part of it for me. And then this one has, like, a really good story to it, too. So it's just... It's awesome. Definitely recommend. Um, And I'm also currently waiting for like six audiobooks to become available at the library Mm -hmm. um, through Libby. And I think, I don't know if I talked about Libby on here before, but I like can't recommend it enough. Like I talk to you about it all the time, Taylor. Mm -hmm. But it's basically like this app you can get on your phone that you connect to your library and you can get... Um, audiobooks and like digital ebooks on Kindle and stuff yeah and through your library so it's awesome um but yeah I have a few on there that I'm gonna read or listen to and then I have some lined up that I want to read like saved on Goodreads which is another app 
that I got recently. Mm -hmm. And like usually I focus on something like this for a few weeks and then forget about it, you know? Yeah, but hopefully, that's me. That's I know. Me. I'm, I'm really hoping I can keep it going. <laughs> See, I got into this like really big reading. I don't even know what to call it. Mood, like, I guess. Like binge. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, binge. Like over the summer. And I bought so many books, guys. I mm -hmm. bought like 15 books. Guys, I don't read 15 books. I used to yeah. be able to. I'm yeah. a very busy person now. Um, and I read like four of them, which honestly is pretty good. But I still have a big stack that I got to get through. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get yeah. there again. See, that's What's why that I've one been... that we I'm supposed to read? You told me to read it. Oh. I forgot already. I... No, it's red, white, and ro royal blue. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Red, white, that's and royal next blue. up for that's me. A good one. Mm -hmm. Do you you have that one right? Mm -hmm. okay. See, that's my thing. I've never tried to read on the phone. I I like real books. Yeah. See, I've been listening to audiobooks, and that's helped me a yeah, lot. Yeah. See, I need to try that. I don't think I've ever listened to one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's basically like a podcast. So yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. So fun. Um. So, yeah, that's another goal I have to read more. Um, and I, I thought about getting a planner for this year, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't ever keep up with that, you know? Okay, you know what, like, though? I got one. I got a planner back in August, and I've kept up with it thus far. Really? To this day. Yeah, every day. Crazily. See. But I think I got... it's just, like, just because my life is so stressful, I really needed to write it down. Like, hmm. I don't know how I was doing it before. With, I mean, really, truly. See, like, I got a really nice planner, like, a year or two ago, and I just, I used it for, like, a few weeks and then stopped. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm like, am I going to pay for one well, and then not use it? I only paid, like, $10 for mine at, like, TJ Maxx. Yeah. See, I just need to get a cheap one. Mm-hmm. And I've written in it every single day. So. Yeah. Maybe it's time to upgrade a little bit, but I think I have till, like, August mm -hmm. in this one, so we're good for a while. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Well, I do have one more thing to mention to our listeners out there. Um, we got alien twins. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we did. Ned and Nebula. Ned and Nebula. They're so cute. Look at our Instagram if you want to see what they look like. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, they're going to be reunited soon in Wilmington <laughs> um, at Yay. Taylor's house. I'm so excited. Yeah. They're so ready to see each other. I, already, I can feel the vibes. Yeah. Um, Taylor, do you want to tell everybody who... Oh, yeah, I who guess I don't know who they, guys are. they are. Okay, yeah. Um, For Christmas, I got myself and Savannah an alien Build-A-Bear. They're twins, fraternal. Um, Mine's name is Ned, and Savannah's is Nebula. And they're green little Build-A-Bear aliens, if you can imagine, with blue yeah. holographic eyeballs. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're so perfect. cute and so fuzzy. Yep. And as an adult... I don't think I've seen a Build-A-Bear in such a long time, but they're way bigger than I remember. And I feel like that's normally opposite. Like, when you get older, things are smaller, but they look a lot bigger to me. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I think I, I've had um, a few Build-A-Bears in the past. Um, actually, I used to go to my one friend's house for sleepovers, and then in the morning, she would be like, do you want to go to Build-A-Bear? So she, she took me a few times. So uh, I had a, see, a few. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been in a long time. Yeah. So I just really don't remember. But yeah. we love Ned and Nebula. They're so cute. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's all I really had to say um, before we get into our stories. Yeah, me too. You too. Um, yeah, okay. So I guess we'll get into it for all those people out there who are waiting on us yeah, to get like, started. Shut up. You have talked for 10 minutes. Sorry, guys. It's been a long time. It feels... It's a new year. Like, guys, there's a lot. Yes, yes. And it's, it's been a long time for us because we we waited a few extra days to record. We waited our, a few extra days. Day. We also recorded early for, like, Christmas. So, like, it's really been a that's while. That's true. Yeah, that's true. For so, us. We're, we were off schedule. Yeah. Like, y'all didn't notice anything. And never will. But we know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So, let's let's get into it. So... This week, I have another creature to talk about. Oh, a creature. I mm -hmm. love a good creature. So, this is the Auklut. Never heard of her. Yeah. So, I actually, um, my mom actually sent me a link to, um, like, an article or a picture of this thing. Um, so, she sort of inspired it. So, if she's listening, um, thank you, mom. Shut up. She's not listening, though. <laughs> no, she, she might be she listens sometimes true 
I'm thinking um, of my mom. She doesn't listen. Oh. Well. <laughs> Okay, so this creature is from like Inuit and uh, Yupik folklore, so Native American, um, and it's around the Alaskan um, like coast and near the Bering Strait area. Mm, I have no idea where that is. Yeah, just up there in the Arctic, so it's very cold, cold you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and it is an orca-wolf hybrid. Um, so. like an orca whale? Yes. A whale wolf? Yes. A wolf whale. <laughs> yes. Mm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, so the auklet is an orca wolf. Um, so it's a creature that, it's, like, a lot of things show it as either, like, a orca wolf hybrid or, like, a creature that can transform from an orca to a wolf. Okay. And, like, back and forth, you yeah. know? Makes sense. So. So, um, its tracks can be recognized because they're, like, wolf tracks leading to the edge of the water, um, or, like, tracks at the, at the shoreline coming from the water, Mm -hmm. you know? So, you would, um, if you see them, you would think that, like, oh, this wolf went to the water and then, like, jumped in, basically. Yeah. So, that's how they, um, sort of recognize that that was, uh, one of these creatures, um so yeah (laughs) um and they're like really they're known to be like really fierce and dangerous um they're said to like hunt and kill people so not very fun no not at all yeah um and they'll also they'll like kill you if you fall asleep near the edge of the water so don't do wow. that. Okay. Um, but also, like, you probably shouldn't do that anyway, because, like, what if you fall in? You right. Know? And it's also probably cold out there, guys. Get indoors. Yeah. No, exactly. Um, and because of this, dogs seen, like, walking on the edge of the ocean um, are considered to be evil. Oh. So, makes sense. Okay. So if you see a dog by the water, it's like, oh. It's evil. Could be one of them. Um, and sometimes the Aklut has gone into, like, Inuit camps to, um, eat the people. No. <laughs> yeah. That's mean. Yeah. And they're, they're said to have a huge appetite. Oh, good. Good. Wait, okay. Mm-hmm. Question. Are these the size? I guess we don't really know the size, because it could be any. But, like, are they whale size or wolf size? Well, they're, like, huge. So okay, <laughs> Makes so sense. maybe more like uh, whale size, I okay. guess. <laughs> okay. Um. So one source said that the creature is more of like a spirit, and it takes physical form when it's hungry and wants to hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is this is where it like describes it being like half wolf, half orca, and it comes on land to hunt people so um all of the pictures and renditions that i've seen that when i like you know google search it um are like a cross between a wolf and an orca right but um so basically like a wolf body but an orca face and like a fin and a big tail uh and most have fur but some have no fur um And originally, they were actually just giant orcas that could shapeshift into giant wolves on land. So, you know, it, the, the way it looks sort of goes back and forth. For sure. You know? So Mm -hmm. I guess the more like traditional sense of it is like fully transitioning back and forth, but like more modern, it's like across between them because that's more interesting you know (laughs) oh yeah definitely um okay so here is sort of like the legend of how this came to be so there are there's actually many stories of how the akla came to be but um i have the most popular here um there was a man who was obsessed with the sea 
and he wanted to be with the sea like all the time okay he Moana. Was, yeah honestly he was like <laughs> so over the top and like yeah um one day he comes to shore and he returns to his village but his people like don't recognize him because he's so crazed and like too obsessed with the ocean Mm -hmm. um and he gets banned from the village because of how weird he's acting oh yeah so while he's out on his own he finds a pack of wolves and he starts thinking about his village and how he was kicked out and he starts to get hungry like a wolf for revenge okay. against them somebody play the song alexa <laughs> honestly <laughs> um so he becomes like one with the wolves basically okay and like transforms into one so like a little werewolf moment mm -hmm. you know okay jacob yeah basically um all these references <laughs> there's um, just too many uh -huh. so after being with the wolves for a bit he remembers like how obsessed he was with the ocean he's like Okay, well, like, I was kicked out of my tribe because of the ocean, so, like, let's go back to the ocean. Makes sense. <laughs> you know? Yeah, makes complete sense. Um, so, he goes back to the ocean, and he, like, becomes one with the ocean as well, and transforms into an orca. Mm -hmm. As you do. As, of course, as you do. <laughs> so, now he swims as an orca, but when he is on land and his hunger for revenge returns, mm -hmm. he will turn back into a wolf. Listen, that makes complete and utter sense to me. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he basically became this creature out of spite for his tribe. Mm -hmm. um, because they thought he was acting weird and yeah. kicked him out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seems like a yeah. big miscommunication to me. But honestly, now true. his legend lives on forever. Yeah. Um, it's basically like a story about somebody who is getting bullied yeah. and then getting revenge on his bullies by turning into like random animals yeah, and then probably going and trying to eat them. Yep. <laughs> so. Mm. That's you know, the tea right there. That's what happens, I guess. Don't bully people. That's the lesson, guys. Yeah. True, true, true. Um, even if someone's acting weird, you should, yeah. you should accept them. Let them be know? weird. We're all Except weird. Yeah, except for who they are. I'm weird. We're all weird. Mm hmm Um, so there are some real life explanations for how this story sort of came to be. Like if you don't believe that a guy just turned into a wolf and an orca well, one day. Why I mean, would, I don't know. Why would nobody believe that? You're right. I believe it. <laughs> but um <laughs> but some some things that are more, you know, real life um arctic wolves can swim in icy water apparently yeah i was gonna ask about the wolves because i was like okay i understand like the theory behind the tracks and everything like the wolves walking up to the water but can they not swim yeah so i guess i guess i can mm -hmm. uh, that's what i that's what i read Makes um sense. so that explains the footprints um and i guess somebody saw the footprints and didn't know that the wolves could swim mm -hmm. you know yep. and then they just made up this story about a wolf that turned into an orca i don't yeah. know <laughs> i don't know they just love um, whales yeah maybe that was the person who was obsessed with yeah. the ocean <laughs> um so the ice also could have broken off you know so like if you walk up to the edge of the water like we're in the arctic right so um if these wolves were to walk up to the edge of the water it's like ice yeah so for sure. that part um it could have broken off yeah i'm trying to explain this in no like, i know what you mean yeah so like they might not have actually walked up to the edge yeah you know like the ice just broke yeah, like, yeah. especially with global warming i mean <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So that could explain it too, like seeing seeing footprints all the way up to the edge. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and uh, so those are those are some some explanations for like the footprints, and also some say that a wolf that is rejected by the pack will um, commit suicide 
actually what? by jumping into the water to no. drown. What? No way. Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, sad. I mean, see, but, like, I don't know, because, like, can't they swim? Yeah. So, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Somebody needs to weigh in on this. I need to know more. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, didn't do too much research into that, but, like, I feel like they can swim, so, like, they should be fine. But. Yeah, and it's it's kind of like, like, humans can't really drown themselves. Like, if you want to drown yourself, you kind of have to, like, weigh yourself down because your body, like, won't allow you to. That's at least what I've heard. I mean, I guess you could jump into, like, rough water. Yeah, well, that's true. And I don't know how rough the Ar- Arctic water is. It probably, it can probably get pretty rough. Yeah, I surely wouldn't want to be in it. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of, is some, some explanations people came up with for, like, the, the wolf part of it, but there's honestly not much explanation for the orca part of the story. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, don't really have anything on that Well, one. that part just must be true. Yeah, see, I, I, I think the whole thing's true. Me too. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I do have a fun fact. This is actually, um, the Akla is actually a creature in Dungeons and Dragons, too. No way. Yeah. So, I have, like, the little description here, um, that I'll, I'll read. So, the Akla is a vicious predator which stalks land and water. It has the muscular legs of a wolf and the body and head of, of a killer orca. These qualities combined give it speed on land and deadly chasing ability in the waters, where it often hunts prey and other than fish. Yikes. So that is the the D and D. Honestly, if I was playing D and D, I would want that as my character. Because that's hard to beat. Land and the water. To be fair, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, so I don't even know how to play. But I've yeah. seen Stranger Things, so I know enough. I think it's like you have your little character thing, but then you can use these creatures to, like, attack. Yeah, I think so, too. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I've never wrong. played either. Yeah. I was going to say, like, Eddie Munson probably knew what it was. Eddie but... definitely knew. <laughs> oh, I was going to say something, but let me not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so, like, that's basically... You know, a, a synopsis of the Aklut. Um, There is actually another version of this creature that is like a beluga whale that transforms into a reindeer on land. What? Okay, that's even crazier. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I know it shouldn't make it crazier that it's being transformed into a wolf than a reindeer, but <laughs> the reindeer is just crazy. Yeah. So basically, it's the same thing, but it's a reindeer on land and a beluga whale in the ocean. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it has the same name, too, because I couldn't find another name for it. Hmm. Well, it's just a so. different type, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but, yeah, that's the the Auklet. That's crazy. I've never heard of that before. Um, yeah, I hadn't either. The, um, but cool. The renditions, like the, the pictures that I was talking about, they're crazy. Oh, <laughs> so. I can really only imagine what those pictures are like. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to see them. Go check out our Instagram. So you guys can see them, too. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. Well, everybody needs to buckle up because we're really switching gears here. Um, I don't know what's wrong with me. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. I'm ready. I'm ready to get into yours. I'm already, like, I'm, like, losing my breath talking about my story because we haven't done this in a while. mm -hmm. And I'm just, like, trying to get back into it. It really is hard. Yes, like, <laughs> I hope it doesn't sound like I'm losing my breath, because I was, like, trying to hold it together. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm ready for yours, though. I know it's I know it's crazy, because you've been talking about it to me. Guys, I don't know what's wrong with me. I decided to do, like, one of the hardest stories. The craziest story of my life. The longest of my life. Today, I have for you the conspiracy slash mystery um, of Princess Diana. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to hear about this. This one, oh, okay, I just want a disclaimer. Royal family, please don't come for me. I'm coming for you, but you can't come for me. I'm sorry. It's all, it's all alleged. Alleged. It's all alleged, except for some of the things I'm going to say might not be alleged, but you know, (laughs) it's, it's fine. 
Um, this is for entertainment pur- purposes. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, so, obviously, I think we all know who Princess Diana is. We love her. What a queen. Um, and I just want to start off by saying, like, I'm probably going to make some jokes. I'm in no way trying to make fun of her at all. She's a queen, and may she rest in peace, okay? Right. Love her so mm-hmm. much. So, um, yeah, just had to start out with that one. Um, so, I, this, I think, might be the most mysterious death, period, in my opinion. Yeah, see, I know, like, the basic mm-hmm. story of it, but I don't know all the details that you're probably going to well, get into. I'm definitely going to get into it. So, before I do, though, I'm going to say... That I think this might be my two-part story. My first one ever, okay? <gasps> Ooh, so okay. It's a little long, so you're going to have to buckle up. But we might have to finish it next week, guys. So just get on ready, I suppose. So mm-hmm. let's just jump right on in. So we're going to start from the very beginning of Princess Diana's life because I think that's really the only way we can do it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so she was born Diana Spencer. On July 1st, 1961, in Norfolk in the United Kingdom. So, she's British. And honestly, I don't know why I thought she was American. Um, okay, I mean, I... Just for, like, not, like, when I was doing this. But, like, at one point in my life, I definitely thought she was American. Yeah, well... Um, I don't know why. But, anyway, she's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, her family actually grew up, like, right next to, like, the rich families. So, she was, like, acquainted with the royal family, like, a little bit, you know. Okay. So, you know, that's cool. She first met Prince Charles when she was 16 years old. Um, so, like, she, like, knew of them, but, like, didn't actually meet them until she was in her teens. So, but she actually did know most other members of his family, just not actually Charles, which is interesting. Okay. Um, so, yeah, like I said, she grew up around them and, you know, obviously knowing who they are. I mean, everybody in the whole world knows who they are, but especially if you live there, like right beside them, you know. Um, and actually, everybody always said that she had a crush like on her on him her whole life, pretty much. Oh, really? So that's team. Yeah. I mean, see, that, um, I mean, that, like, doesn't surprise me because I feel like a lot of people will have crushes on, like, the princes. Of course, know, I would so. have a crush on the prince if I live right beside him, too. Yeah, like, no, especially if you live right beside him. But <laughs> if, even, like, in the magazines and stuff. You oh, know, definitely. Like, definitely. They're in, they're in the spotlight. Most so. definitely. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, okay, it's also said that she had, like, a very happy and secure childhood. But, however, one of her brothers, like, later came out and said it wasn't really as nice and happy, like, as it seemed on the outside. So, you know, he doesn't really go that much yeah. into it, really. But I feel like that's that's the case a lot of the time. You know? no. <laughs> For real. Unfortunately. But he did go a little bit into it. And he was, like, basically there was this huge custody battle. Oh. Um that kind of caused her to, like, start to have an unhappy childhood because when her parents, like, got divorced or whatever, her <clears throat> her father was just kind of quiet, didn't really talk to anybody, and her mom just wasn't really meant to be a mom is kind of what they say. So, like, I kind of, okay. we can all understand, like, what they mean mm-hmm. by that. So that is coming from, you know, her brother. So I'm just relaying that information. That's not actually what Diana said, so... Right. Anyway, so I, another thing I didn't know, she was actually homeschooled until high school. Oh. Which I did not know that. And then in high school, when she actually went to school, she went to an all-girls boarding school. Huh, okay. Which I didn't know that either, but that's cool. Um, and so when she was there, she excelled in swimming and diving, and she studied ballet and tap dance, which is so cool. Hmm. Love that. I would do that, too. I just feel like she's living such, like, a movie life, like, growing up in the UK doing ballet and right. tap dance yeah uh, at least up until this point anyway um so you know whatever she graduates from high school blah 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 and now we're in 1978 and diana was working as a nanny um you know she loved kids um she loved being a nanny she was like a nanny to like a bunch of different families in her whole life so just a lot of people in the town knew her too and loved her so that's even makes it even more sad knowing what eventually happens um and so eventually she quit nannying like once she kind of like felt like she you know grew out of it 
there's like an age like I feel like when we feel like we're too old to nanny I guess but um yeah it's like when you want to get your own life together yeah right? exactly so exactly yeah so she decided to travel a little bit and then go live with her mom in London for a little while just like working small jobs trying to make some money and eventually she got a job as a preschool assistant teacher which was like her favorite thing in the whole world she loved being a teacher that's just, so cute like I, I didn't know that I didn't know she worked with kids so much me neither and it just makes so much sense though because like she was such a good mom yeah oh, I know my heart yeah my heart so I mentioned earlier that Diana first met the Prince of Wales when she was 16 and she actually met him in November of 1977 and he was 29 at the time 29 I repeat and she was 16 oh I repeat God. And Ooh, he was uh, sick. It's sick. So, and actually, when they first met, he was dating Diana's older sister, Sarah. That's so weird. Mm, the drama. No. Like, was her sister mad? Oh, my God. Um, I think probably. <laughs> <laughs> did you Did you see there's, anything that's No, about? there's not really mention of it. But, like, I, I mean, I think she, she was older. So, like, she kind of got over it. And she probably isn't going to say that. After oh, of her course she can't sister. say that. No. Yeah. No. So um, Yikes. Oh yeah, but gosh. that's like I concerning. That. I didn't know that their age difference was that much. I knew there was one. But that's a yeah. lot. How old was her sister? Um, you know, I didn't actually look that up. Probably but, closer to twenty nine. <laughs> definitely. Probably like twenty, twenty one. Which is still not still not close. So but you know, that it was nineteen you know, the nineteen seventies, so you know, whatever, I guess. But definitely concerning, for sure. Um, so one weekend, Charles and Diana were guests at this, like, country weekend, whatever is what they called it, during the summer of 1980. And apparently during that summer, that was when Diana really fell in love with him. Um, and she said that she, like, during this weekend watched him play polo. And he noticed her, like, watching him. Like, just literally out of the movies. Um, yeah. And the rest is apparently history. That's That was their, like, little baby story. Um, so after the little polo game, he met up with her and invited her on his royal yacht to Britannia to sail for the weekend. Can you imagine? <sighs> oh, my God. Now listen. If a prince invited me on a yacht for the weekend i would def go reg- like regardless of the age difference um that's I mean, bad yeah same but same. yeah like can't like absolutely i would have said mm-hmm, sign me up um so you know maybe that's a little bit sketchy today but i would have definitely went um and she did and she said it was like very you know very bougie very lavish very fun and Apparently, this trip, she was very well received by the queen, the queen mother, and the duke. So, she won the whole family over, over this little weekend, which is good for her. So, they start officially dating, or courting, as they call it, in London. Um, And so, we're going to fast forward four years. They're still dating. Um, They're cute or whatever. And Charles proposed to Diana on February 6th, 1981 at the Windsor Castle. Very fancy. And Diana accepted his proposal on February 6th, but they actually kept the engagement a secret for two and a half weeks. Oh, why? Yeah. And yeah, so I don't really know why. It does. I couldn't really find out why. So, don't really know. But... So, two and a half weeks forward, you know, ahead, February 24th, 1981, their engagement becomes public. And this might have something to do with it, I suppose, but Diana selected her own engagement ring. Um, oh, okay. I guess. I don't really know. But the royal family did not like that. And that was, like, the kind of, like, the first thing that they didn't like that she did because they wanted it to oh. be, like, more traditional, like, passed down in the family. But she wanted her own ring. And she got it. Okay. Um, (laughs) So I guess that's like the normal is just to have like one of the family rings. Yeah, I guess. So I guess they're very traditional. I mean, clearly it's the royal family. Yeah. Yeah. So, but obviously, and also I think another reason they waited two weeks is because this news. Okay. 
because the whole world knows that like whoever Prince Charles marries, like that's more than likely going to be queen one day. Right. So, right. I mean, that's, that's very big. And it was absolutely the biggest news in British history, like for years and years. Uh-huh. So I can't even imagine like the pressure she must have felt. Yeah. <laughs> like no, at definitely. all. Yeah. Like, imagine having a, a whole country on your shoulders. Like, mm-hmm. mm-mm, that's crazy. So. See, yeah, like being princess and like all that like royalty and stuff seems so great. But then like stuff like that. Yeah. It's just exactly. like, it's probably not as great as it's, it's you know, definitely not as the fairy tales. <laughs> Most definitely not. Um, and to go right along with that, right after the engagement, um, Diana quit her job as the teacher's assistant and which she did not want to do, but I mean, they told her she had to. So obviously she did. Um, I mean, yeah, they can't have her going to work every day no for sure for sure (laughs) she would need like all the security and everything probably Mm -hmm. yeah so she quit and she they had her move into like the clarence house which is where the queen mother lived and the queen mother is what they call like the queen of the mother but they just call it queen mother just so from here here on out i'm so like the mother of the queen Mm -hmm. but they call it queen mother okay so they're the queen elizabeth Yes. The queen mother, her mom, and okay. then other people. Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of different titles. I'm not really going into that, but just for future okay. reference, her so name the is queen, queen mother. mother. Hmm. Um, I feel like I'd rather be queen mother than queen. Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> right? Like, it's way easier. Yeah, way easier. And then it's like, oh, my daughter is queen. Huh? Yeah, and you just you have know? the big and title. You see, You're just queen and mother. Honestly, like, honestly, like, the queen mother seems like she would be more important. Because it's like for sure the only person the queen, like probably cares to. about the most yes. is her mom. So that's I don't so know. True. I mean, I'm not sure if that's how it it is, but that's how it would seem to me. That's how it would seem to me too. And you know, I don't even know either because there was no way I was getting into the family tree. <laughs> oh, this yeah, absolutely yeah. not. Like I could really talk about this for probably the whole year. Yeah, long. That's it how seems many like things. A lot. But <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, anyways, Diana, living with the Queen Mother, um, an icon, allegedly. So, and they were, the two, I mean, they grew close. Obviously, they were roommates. They were roomies. Um, and so after, you know, a little stint with the Queen Mother, she then moved into the Buckingham Palace, up, like, all the way up until the wedding. Which, can't imagine that either. Can you imagine moving into the Buckingham Palace? Like, that's where people go visit, like, the tourists. Like, take pictures right, like, outside. Hmm. Cannot imagine. And this is, like, like way a long time ago. Like, yeah. today would be even crazier. Yeah, I was going to say, like, can you imagine people going and touring your house while you still live in it? Mm-mm. Absolutely Like, were not. they touring it while they lived in it? I don't, like, probably. I, huh. I would assume so. So. Yeah. Well. Wild. Um, according to biographer Ingrid Seward, who apparently wrote, like, the biography of her life, Diana, um, she said that she was incredibly lonely up, like, up until her marriage because she was, like, literally living by herself in this palace. Oh. Um, which is really sad. And they, like, wouldn't let her leave or do anything, obviously. I mean, the security. I mean, people want to ask her so many questions. Right. Like, and I would too, but, you know. I don't she know, like. kind of left all alone, literally. See, part of me would be, like, like, was her fiancé, like, not even there? Like, I would Mm-mm. I would break it off. I'd be like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> um, same. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just continue, because right? I got, you like, know, you're following my story right along, because it ain't good. Because you see, you see what's, like, to come, basically, with this, right? Yeah, like, that's, that's true. That's very, it's very true. Um, so, yeah, you might be, like, asking, where is Charles? Like, if, like, it's not the night before the wedding. Like, he can definitely be there, you know? Well... Turns out, the entire time that Diana and Charles were together, he had this side chick named Camilla. Um, so we'll get more on into Camilla later, but that's kind of, he was busy. He was busy yeah. with other people. See, if, if they were together the whole time, why did he not just want to marry her? I don't so, understand. <laughs> My assumption and other people's assumption is that his family didn't approve of Camilla. 
to be the queen. Okay. And they, they kind of, like, forced Diana as a, like, queen. Okay. Like, they wanted her instead. But he did not want her. Huh. So. Okay. I mean, that's horrible. But that's yeah. apparently what it is. Um, yeah. So. Even though. And uh, it was honestly, like, well known that he was, like, seeing other people during this time. So that's just even worse. Because she's just <laughs> sitting by herself and then he's just out and about doing whatever he wants to do. That is awful. Because I... See, I don't understand, like, how is it better for his image to do this, like, right. have a side piece versus, like, just marrying this person that, even if they don't approve. Right. Like, well, I guess, because then it wouldn't be queen. But, like, yeah. I just... I mean, that's just, like, the royal family for you. Nothing they do really makes sense. Not yeah. coming for them, just Cause you would, Because you would think that that would hurt their image, too. But, I, I mean, I guess it didn't hurt them as much. Just, no. I guess they were right, I guess, back then, which is just awful. And honestly, some people even, like, kind of praised him for it. What? Yeah, it's really disgusting. Huh. Um, and, oh, man, I want to tell you something so bad. Let me just go ahead. Spoiler alert. Charles and Camilla, to this day, are still together. Yeah. So. Yeah, see, I would be shocked, but I did know that. Yeah. See, that's that's insane. That's I insane. I just can't believe. That's really insane. And, like, is she not ashamed? That's like, what I I'm just, saying. Like, girl. Are they both what? not? I just have so like, many questions. Know. Like, people are really out here just living as if this, what I'm about to tell y'all, did not just happen. She, because she just, she probably just wants to be, like, in the royal family. So she yeah. doesn't care. Yeah. yeah. And as most people would. And I feel like that's why people don't ask questions. Like, ugh. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. So, moving along. Um. To July 29th, 1981. This is the day, the royal wedding of Charles and Diana. It was held at St. Paul's Cathedral. Um, and that's actually not where they wanted to have it. But they didn't get the option because that was the place that could hold the most people. Like around the area. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they had to have it there. Um, it was shown on global television and literally everyone in the world was watching. Um, it was described to be like the like it was like the perfect fairy tale wedding quote unquote um and it said that over 750 million people watched like live that's literally like such a small fraction like a big fraction of the world at once yeah which was crazy back then yeah in the 1980s um so adding to diana's controversy kind of like it began with her engagement ring but i'm assuming the family was like yeah whatever you know she's the princess she can have what she wants but adding on to her controversy at the wedding um she actually reversed the order of charles first two names so like in her vow she said philip charles when his name is actually charles philip and (laughs) wait what (laughs) so it's kind of speculated that she either was very nervous and kind of like accidentally flipped it which i could definitely see Or Mm -hmm. that she did it, like, to kind of, like, get a stab at him because, like, he's cheating on her and, like, Uh you know, kind of have, like, it's like a power move, honestly. Like, she's saying it because that's not his name. Yeah. Like, that's not his name. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it's flipped and so she's... Yeah. So... Saying her vows, but I guess not technically to him because it's Mm -hmm. not his name. Yeah. Well, she did go back and say it. Right. Oh, okay. So, I think, I honestly feel like she was probably just nervous. Because yeah. I'd be stuttering, too. Yeah. Like that. But who knows? I know. I know. Your wedding, like, <laughs> broadcasted to everybody. Oh, my gosh. No. I'm, I'm even afraid. I'm, like, scared to get married in front of, like, my your family. Your family and friends. Like, yeah. And then, like, yeah, like, on TV in front of everybody. Like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh. Absolutely I would not. be terrified. No. I, I really couldn't do it. I, like, even the thought of doing it, no. Couldn't. Could never be me. She was such a strong person, and, for real. And people can record it and go back and look again. <laughs> Forever. Yes. Forever. Yeah. That's a big no for me. Big no. Um, so not only did she switch up his name, okay? That wasn't even the big controversy. The biggest thing that she did was that she did, she refused to say that she would obey him, like the traditional vow says. Oh, okay. I mean, personally me... I'm totally 100% for that. I'm not saying I'm obeying anybody. 
Oh, no, definitely not. Um, but back then, that was crazy. That was a big old, that was a big no-no. Yeah, especially with the traditional royal mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. Like... But she didn't say it. And they were not happy about it, okay? They were not happy about it. Um, but props to her on that, because I completely agree. And also, I just wanted to note that her dress was nearly $50,000, and it had a 25-foot train. That's oh, big money. I know I did not convert that to what it would be today, but that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a 25-foot train? Girl, I would fall. <laughs> yeah. Fall down. Wild. Oh um, so, this wedding officially made Diana, which now officially Princess Diana... The third highest ranked woman in the royal family. So, the queen mother, the queen, Diana. So. That, okay. See, that's crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. That's, see, that explains a lot of what I, what I knew before you started this. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, actually, the queen mother did pass away very shortly after the wedding, which made her second in command. Oh. And we all know, recently in 2022... Queen Elizabeth did die, so if Diana was still here today, would that make her queen? I don't know. Yeah, see, I don't know how it works. That's what confuses me. But... Don't know, but, um, yeah. So, and, okay, so I just need you to take all of that, what I just said, into consideration when I tell you that at this time, Diana was 20 years old. The day of the wedding. Yeah. That's crazy. 20? Yeah. Girl, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm 25. Like, she really yeah, has the whole country on her um, shoulders. The whole UK. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's so young. Like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then how old is he? Um, so, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. 33. Oh. So. I mean, I guess that's not too bad, but still, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. It really is crazy. Mm. So... After the wedding, they start to live, you know, life together as a married couple. And just shortly after a year, a little bit after a year, um, on June 21st, 1982, Diana gave birth to Prince William. We all know who Prince William is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and two years after that, on September 15th, 1984, she gave birth to Harry. Yes. Harry. The favorite. We love Harry. <laughs> Literally love Harry so much. Um, so... There are some conspiracies that Harry may or may not actually be Charles's biological son. Um, oh. And perhaps that he might be the writing instructor's son. Um, I, oh, okay. That, okay, the story is already long enough. Well, I'm not getting into it. Maybe another day. Um, right. But I do just have to say, if you're interested, maybe just Google some photos of the two side by side. They look exactly alike. Is it just because of the red hair? I don't know. You tell me. But, you know, we're just going to move on from that. Just know it's a possibility. And if that is true, like if Harry really is not Charles' son, they would never say it. They would never come out and say it publicly. That is true. That yeah, would be the no, biggest, right. like that would be the biggest controversy. And the fact that, like, he sort of left the family. Exactly. Like, is like, that why they let him? Because he's mm-hmm. not even mm-hmm. related? Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. There's a yeah, see, lot in this. Yeah. That's, like, for another day. That's a whole <laughs> that's other thing. That's what I was going to say. Like, there's so much on the royal family. Like, there's probably, not only is going to be these two parts, but probably more. There's just a lot. So, back to Diana. Um... For this story, we're just going to imagine that Harry really is Charles' son. So, yeah. Um, so, Diana, like I said before, truly the best mom to her kids. She was unlike any mom that was in the royal family, like up to this point. She wanted to be very hands on, and that was very unusual for the royal family. Like, all the other moms and like wives and stuff all had nannies, and the nannies would pretty much raise the kids. But, um, Diana actually declined the royal nanny that they arranged for her and picked out her own nanny, but she actually only used the nanny, like, two days out of the week, barely. Yeah. Because she wanted to do it herself. That's awesome. I know. I love that. You know, she knew what she wanted, and she got it done. Yeah. See, okay. Also, though, like, as princess, did she have, like, 
any work to do during the week? Um, so, yeah, I'll get into it more later. But she, I mean, kind of basically, no, unless she wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to do a lot. She okay was very much so, like, for so many good causes. And well, I guess they, yeah, they do, like, projects mm-hmm. and nonprofits and stuff like yeah. that, right? So she definitely had a lot of stuff doing, like, during the day and stuff. But yeah. Especially in, like, the early years of their life, she just was their mom, pretty much. Yeah. Because I guess um, the other moms previously, they would just, like, let the nanny take care of it. And then would they even do anything as much as she is? Like, you know, I feel like she just does the most. And then these other moms would just, like, let them get raised by someone else and then go off and, like, relax. (laughs) Literally. Literally. And not do anything. That's exactly... I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe no, they you're did right. do stuff. You're but... right. No, you're one hundred percent right. <laughs> um, yeah, and she just was not about that. She was like, I'm not doing that. Sorry. <laughs> Which yeah. love her personality. Mm-hmm. Um let's see here. I lost my spot. Okay, so one really important cause and one thing like revolutionary that Princess Diana did um while she was princess was that she was one of the first people to publicly shake hands with somebody who had AIDS um, on live television. And so back then, people thought, you know, AIDS could be, like, transferred by touching somebody who has AIDS. That's not true. Um, Mm -hmm. And she, like, worked very hard, like, with the LGBTQ uh, community and, like, was very close with that and tried to, like, prove, like, look, if Princess Diana can, you know, shake hands with somebody with AIDS, like, you can too. Which, mm-hmm. I love that. That's amazing. Um, but people did not love that. And the media was after her, um, after she did this. Um, and that was kind of, like, the beginning of the fall for her. Once she did, like, one controversial thing, people, like, hated her. Not Ugh. not most people. Most people loved her because she was, like, real relatable. Yeah. But, like, people who were, like, really, like, for, like, traditional values and stuff, like, they were, like, no, we're not down. We're not down with this. Yeah, I heard, um, from, from what I know about her, people, like, a lot of people started to hate her towards, like, the end of her life, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then after she was gone, like, now everybody loves her. So it's, like, it really sucks, you One, know? 100%. Because now, like, currently, like, if she was still here, she would be, like, the most loved literally you know royal princess diana for president in america 2020 <laughs> like if she was still here i don't like, yeah, I don't even know if that would be allowed it's but. not allowed but <laughs> yeah. you know i make my own rules here um right yeah no it was she was really going through it and like after this like aids like media stunt or so they called it um she was actually very open about her mental health and that she was like not coping well with becoming a member of the royal family which that they also did not like like, these are conversations that we're having today, barely. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, yeah. it's 2023 now. See, I think if she was still with us today, she would have somehow, like, left the royal family, right? Oh, yes. Like, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. No doubt about that. She would mind. still be in the spotlight, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Most definitely. But, like, do off doing her own charities or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. Oh, she really would. It's so sad. Um, so when she was opening up about like her mental health, she was saying very much so talking about her like depression and she would say that Charles would never listen to her or try to help her or comfort her in any way, which only left her feeling more alone and more depressed. And it's like this time period when she finds out that he's been seeing Camille, Camilla this whole time. So like, that's even worse. So and she really, she kind of didn't know She, that. like, maybe knew it happened once or twice, but definitely that it was not this whole entire time. Oh, okay. Okay. Until now. And so she, like, confronts him about it and, like, tells him, like, how much it hurt her to find that out. And his response, quote, unquote, okay, do you think I'm going to be the only prince that doesn't have a mistress? <gasps> Disgusting. Oh, my God. Charles, get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here with that. Mm -mm. So, I'm just going to move on because I'm going to say things that I probably shouldn't be (laughs) said. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. At this point in time, 
Diana and Charles are five years into their marriage and their incompatibility <laughs> was shining through the cracks. Guys. <laughs> um, they were not a good match for each other. Um, and one thing that they admit that like really impacted their relationship was the age difference, which mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to say duh, but like, duh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. that's a very big, it's like 13 years. Um, and that's, I mean, it was a very like formative time in their lives. Like when they got together, you know, like, and they have on top of everything else, an entire country. Let's not forget that. So right. that's just too much pressure. And along with like the cheating, like it was just too much. So news finally broke in the year 1986 that they were kind of separated, but they were still married. And Diana began a relationship publicly with a man named James Hewitt, who was the family's writing instructor. Oh my God. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize she had another relationship. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. Public. Actually, huh. yeah. And that is the same writing instructor that is rumored to be Harry's dad. Just wanted to mention that again, in case you're curious. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, she publicly did date the writing instructor, and she got, like, a ton of heat for that, too, even though literally Charles had been cheating on her from the start. So, that's stupid. Um, And... At this time, like, in the press, word is really getting out of how, like, Charles and Diana, like, hated each other. And oh, my gosh. <laughs> Diana said that it's, like, really not even that true. Like, they didn't hate, hate each other, but they definitely did not get along. Yeah. So, you know. Um, let's see. There are also reports, like, at this time of apparently Charles' dad would, like, insult Diana on a constant basis. <gasps> and apparently oh. their relationship was full of tension. So... That's not good. Hmm. Um, So they officially kind of break it off. They're at least separated. They're not fully divorced yet. But, you know, this is big. Like, divorce doesn't really happen. You know, separation doesn't really happen, like, in the royal family. But it had to, I guess, at this point. Um, It is Right. Like, okay, before you go Mm -hmm. on, was there any other, like, divorces ever in the royal family? I did not look it up. Um, but I think so. Is that why this is such a big thing? I mean... It's definitely... It's definitely... I think it's more of a big thing because she was supposed to be the queen. Like, I feel like other members of the family have gotten a divorce, but the... All eyes are kind of on, like, Charles, Diana, William, and Harry. Because they're running... They're about to run the show, you know? So I think that added to it, but also, I don't know. I don't know if this is the very first one. So... Um, it's also said that around the same time as all this is going on, um, Charles' aunt, Princess Margaret, allegedly burned highly personal letters that Diana had written to the Queen Mother, like, back in 1993. Um, because if you remember, Diana and the Queen Mother actually, like, lived together and they were, like, little roomies. So, like, they were close. And so Mm -hmm. she had apparently written her some letters And whatever was said in the letters, like, we have no idea. And we never will know because they were burned. But we can assume, like, it's some really bad things about Charles. Right? Mm -hmm. So I wish we knew what those said. But this family just seems to love covering up for one another. So let's just leave it at that, I suppose. Um, So it's now 1992. They officially announce separation publicly they are done and this was huge and so two years after the separation yes we're fast forwarding a little bit um diana does this very famous interview with abc kind of just telling everybody like her side of the story of the separation and stuff and it made charles look really bad obviously and that's because he's disgusting not because diana said anything mean it's just (laughs) disgusting yeah just because she told the truth (laughs) yeah Yeah, but this interview, when I tell you it was famous, like, it was number one trending, okay? YouTube wasn't, didn't exist, but if it did, number one. Um, Everybody saw this interview, and when the queen saw it, literally the same day of the interview, she advised Charles to go ahead and get a divorce. She said, go on, go on ahead now. Oh, my God, Um, that's that's funny. (laughs) Because as bad as, like, the divorce looked, she said, if 
this girl keeps talking about him and is still married to him. Like, this is just worse. So she was like, just go ahead, get the divorce. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I think that's very funny. Um, so anyway, moving forward even more, it's August 1996 and their divorce fi is finalized. And officially she loses her title as the Royal Highness and the Princess. And so okay. now she's just Diana again. And so, you know, what's not normal, which I mean, I didn't know this, but that's not normal, like in the royal family. Like you don't lose a title, especially, especially if you have kids that are going to be like in the royal family. Like they're going to have oh. the throne one day. So like, what? yeah, it, so that was like not normal, even if they did get a divorce, that so they took it away from her because she's, mean... she's technically the queen mother. If you know what I'm saying. But, like, I mean, it makes sense to me that she would get it taken away. But, like. I mean, not... I think so, too. But apparently it's not normal. Yeah. Because, I mean, mm. she is the mom. Regardless. Yeah, she because she's still part of the family. Yeah. And it's her blood as well as yeah. theirs. So, it, yeah. it does make sense. But they took it away from her anyway. Um, so... Oh, and also, we don't know who took her title away. Because apparently, it could be, any like, anybody can request to take it away. I don't really know how it works. Also, it's important to know, I don't think I've mentioned this, that the royal family also has to answer to, like, this committee called the Crown. And they, like, work together. So, like, it could have been the royal family or it could have been the Crown. Oh, huh. That took it away. Yeah. It's too much to get into. But basically, we just don't know. Um... So, yeah, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to just tell you a little bit more, and then I'm going to have to leave the rest of part two. I hate to do it to you guys, but I'll give you a little bit more, okay? So, we're moving forward to 1997, okay? Um, Diana, freshly single and no longer a princess. She starts dating a guy by the name of Dodie Fayed. And at this point in time, paparazzi is absolutely insane for her. Like, the divorce rumors, I mean, all these new relationship rumors, like, everything, everybody wanted to know everything about her that was going on. Um, and apparently, Diana and Dodie had been together for, like, months, and it was rumored that they were possibly going to get engaged, like, real soon. And hmm. that can't be, like, confirmed or denied, but apparently they found some rings. So oh. I don't think it had happened yet, but it was definitely in the works. Um, so they were having, the couple, the new couple, were having this very extravagant weekend at the Ritz Hotel, which is this extremely, extremely fancy hotel in Paris, France. So big bougie. Um, they wanted to have this, like, very nice dinner, like, in the hotel restaurant, but the paparazzi was, like, absolutely wildin' that night, is what they said. And, okay, like, they said that exactly. Yeah, quote, unquote, they were wildin'. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, they really wouldn't leave them alone, like, to the point where they literally had to take their dinner to their hotel room and eat, like, on the edge of the bed. Okay, see, like, I hate that mm -hmm. for celebrities. Mm -hmm. Like... Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine that. I would never want that mm -hmm. ever. And Diana, apparently she had been like rumored to be like very like paranoid or whatever. She was like, people were like, she just cares too much. But she literally had said to them, like as they were eating in the restaurant, she was like, I don't think some of these customers are customers. I think that they're paparazzi trying to take pictures of me. And like people were like, no, like security was like, no, they're just customers. No, they were paparazzi. See, she knows. She knows. Literally, she knows. So, they're, like, eating dinner in their room, and people are, like, coming to the door. Like, they, she was like, we have to get out of here. Like, we have been compromised. Like, we have got to go. Um, Because she just wanted privacy. And honestly, I really feel like they were about to get engaged. That was probably the plan. Was that, <sighs> like, I mean, imagine. So sad. You're taking your girlfriend or boyfriend to Paris at the, mm -hmm. like, nicest hotel. Mm -hmm. and you're having a very fancy dinner and you have rings that to me sounds like somebody's getting engaged but mm -hmm. that it was ruined so anyway 
they were like, we got to we gotta get out of here. We got to leave because there's too many people and we just want to chill and they don't want to chill. So they planned this like getaway car situation where it was going to like appear to the paparazzi that they were leaving the hotel when actually they were leaving at the back of the hotel in a different car, if you know what I'm saying. The old yeah, witch up, mm-hmm. the sneakeroo, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the old switcheroo. <laughs> the old switcheroo. Um, so, you know, that's what they do. They use the back entrance of the hotel and attempt to sneak out to get to Dodie's, like, apartment. They're like, we can go there. Like, people don't know where that is, you know. And they just, they wanted to get to his place with no paparazzi following them. That's not that much to ask for, but that's what they wanted. So, um... Diana was just going to go with the driver of the car, like, which the hotel, like, organized or whatever. And the driver was named Henri Paul, which very fancy name. Mm-hmm. Um, but so it was just supposed to be Dodie, Diana and the driver Henri. But actually, Diana's bodyguard, Trevor Reese Jones, actually, he refused. He was like, Mm-mm, no, I'm going to go with you guys and just make sure you get there safely, which is very sweet of him to do because like she was like you can go like you're off the clock man and he was like no i'm gonna make sure that you get there so Mm -hmm. sweet of trevor um so in the car in the the real car that they were in not the fake one diana and Dodie were in the back of the car and Henri and trevor were in the front um so all of this work that they have done to make this like secret plan to escape the hotel without being seen it doesn't work the paparazzi Saw right around the old switcheroo. It was even the old switcheroo back then. Um, (laughs) I guess. And so the paparazzi follow them. Okay. And Henri is driving this car into the Pont de la Ma tunnel. And this tunnel has like pillars separating like the traffic, like the two ways of traffic, if you know what I'm saying. So there's like a bunch of pillars like down the middle of this tunnel. And um, it is in this tunnel where Henri loses control of the car and crashes it into the 13th pillar in the tunnel. Oh, my gosh. Um, and the car, once he crashes into this pillar, I mean, when I say absolutely destroyed, I mean absolutely destroyed. Like, mm-hmm. when I saw the picture of the car, I mean, I was, I wanted to throw up. I was sick even to see the car. So, you know, that we'll post pictures of that, too. Um I mean, it looked unsurvivable, and it pretty much was. Um, Everyone in the car ended up dying, except for Diana's bodyguard, Trevor. Hmm. And that is because he was the only one wearing a seatbelt. Oh, my gosh. Which is crazy. Um, I mean, I guess seatbelts. Seatbelts are more common nowadays. Definitely. You know, decades ago, they weren't Mm -hmm. so Yeah, you kind of have to wear a seatbelt nowadays. So, you know. Yeah. People didn't use to wear seat belts. They Definitely. weren't even in cars for a while. So mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> makes Which is sense. Crazy. But, but yeah, wear your seatbelt. Yeah, guys, wear your seatbelts for sure. Um, Dodie was actually thrown out of the car, which is just literally awful. Um, and it's speculated that Henri um, died on impact. So Henri and Dodie were pretty much dead on impact. Um, when first responders got there, um, they said that Diana was actually alive and she was calling out for Dodie. Um, oh my gosh. She couldn't find him. Obviously, he wasn't in the car. So, I mean, I, that's just literally horrible. Um, now, I did say the paparazzi was following them, so they were not far behind. They got tons of um, pictures mm-hmm. of everything going on, which is really horrible. Like, really horrible. They did not help. They did not offer to help. They were just taking pictures. Like, that's really beyond me. Um and it is actually said that the paparazzi caught what is at least known as Diana's last words oh my gosh. Um, to be, quote unquote, oh, my God, leave me alone. <sighs> Talking to the paparazzi. Which See, is, like, <sighs> do it. Leave her alone. Please, like, I guys, just... leave her. I oh mean, come gosh. on. If at any time you need to leave her alone, I think it might be right now. Uh-huh. Like, it really is right now. Um. So they actually had to cut Diana out of the car with a chainsaw. And at this point in time in France, it was protocol apparently to do like life-saving measures at the scene of the accident 
first and then try to transport them like eventually to the hospital, which is not the method that we have today. Um, but that apparently was what was going down back then. Okay. So she actually wasn't transferred to the hospital for like one and a half hours after <gasps> the accident. Oh my okay? God. What? And I thought you were going to say like 20 <laughs> minutes. Um, Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, so that might have been protocol, but I feel like one and a half hours is a little bit excessive. Yeah. Clearly, <sighs> clearly, she needed medical attention, needed surgery to survive. Yet, they're going to wait one and a half hours. And um, on the way to the hospital, she suffered two cardiac arrests, but still was alive. Um, they rushed her into surgery as soon as she got to the hospital, but she was pronounced dead on the table. Um, that makes me mad. They, yeah. They could have saved her. They definitely could have saved her. Um, and I think, I hate to do it to you, but I think that's where I'm going to have to leave off part one. Oh, oh <laughs> I'm my so gosh. sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, we have a lot, a lot more information to dive into on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys aren't ready. Like, honestly, what I just told you guys was background information that you yeah. needed to know. It mm-hmm. gets way crazier. And, like, so many things I didn't know. So, you'll have to come back next week to hear part two of the mysterious death of Princess Diana. But, yeah. How oh how was gosh. that? How was part one? That a was lot. insane. It was it was a lot. And there's going <laughs> to be even more. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I'm ready for it. Yeah. I'll leave you with this bit of information to at least, you know, ask a question to you. So we already think it's a little weird, right? That it, they took 1.5 hours to get her to the hospital, right? It's yeah. not even just a regular Joe. This is Princess Diana. Everybody right. knows who it is. Yet they're still going to take nearly two hours to get her to the hospital. So it was later found that the ambulance was driving 25 miles an hour what? on the way to the hospital. What? So. Okay. Make that make sense, guys. Make that makes sense. See, and now you're just going to leave us with that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. I am so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, come back next week to find out what happens, baby. You might think you know, but I don't think you do. Not the extent that I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys this week. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely go check out our Instagram. I'm trying to see this whale creature. Let's not forget about the whale creature. Yes, um, the auklet. Yeah, I don't really want to come across him either, though. Mm-hmm. Him or her, they, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I don't I don't want to get eaten. Um, yeah, no. And I also don't want to be anywhere near the royal family. Because I'm not saying they right. did it, but I'm not saying their hands are clean either. So, mm. mm-mm. But please go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And... That's really all I have for you guys this week. What about you, Savannah? Yeah, I think that wraps it up. Okay, all well, right. cheers to the first episode of 2023. And I can't wait to see you guys next week. Oh, I guess we will. See you guys then. Okay, cue the music. <laughs>